with Dawn Ultra. Its superior grease cleaning formula gets to work faster, making easy work of tough messes. Dawn What's happening now? Mask up, mask off. It's a choice Texans will now be able to make. Coming up, what type of changes businesses are making? And with the mask mandate expiring today in Texas, we're going to take a look at the new health and safety guidelines at the Comel Independent School District. It's a major win for President Joe Biden, the House passing the American Rescue Plan and now sending it to the White House. Just how soon you could see a check in the mail and how much more you could get if you have children. Well, a warm and windy Wednesday in the books. Coming up, we'll talk about what you can expect for the rest of the work week, and I'll have details about chances of showers and storms this weekend. Plus, a shootout caught on camera. Now, Bear County Sheriff's deputies need your help in identifying the suspects. The News at 5 starts right now. First at five, the Texas Department of Health and Human Services expanding eligibility for the COVID-19 vaccine starting March 15th. Anyone 50 years old or older can register to get vaccinated. This is the state's phase 1C category. Again, that will be starting March 15th. Meanwhile, Texas is now 100% open, and while the state no longer has a mask mandate in place, face coverings will still be required at some businesses. As Tiffany Huertas explains, one restaurant owner says she is not changing her policy on wearing masks to keep her employees and customers safe. Others, though, leaving that decision up to the customer. We were doing so well before COVID. Connie Turner, a retired Air Force veteran, and Rick Moreno bought the Bananas Billiards in 2018, but COVID-19 impacted their business. We were shut down for a total of seven months with zero revenue coming in. Today, they are reopening at 100% capacity. Turner says they continue offering hand sanitizer, and they even have a company that comes to clean. We have plenty of room for people to kind of naturally social distance. They will also be encouraging guests to wear a mask, but not requiring it. I think that should have been done a long time ago. Several businesses here at the Pearl have not changed their policies. Many are still requiring customers to wear their mask. We just want everybody to feel safe and enjoy their time with us. At Southerly Fine Food and Brewery, customers must wear a mask when they enter the building. We even had people yesterday that were trying to come through and not wear a mask, even though it's still required. And, you know, we've had some people be very nasty to, to our young men and women that are working at the front door, and, and they're, they're just trying to do their jobs. Even though they are allowed to open at 100%, they are still operating at 50% due to safety reasons. We want to keep our tables separated. Uh, we don't want to get too crowded in here. I think it's definitely time to take off the mask, but um, as far as business owners and like schools, um, if they choose to keep it on, I'm, I totally agree with that as well. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Meantime, Comal ISD announcing a change when it comes to kids wearing masks while learning in person. Yeah, the district says the decision will now be left up to parents and teachers. Comal ISD will still have quarantine protocols in place for anyone who tests positive and says they, quote, strongly recommend the continued use of face coverings to protect our teachers and staff and your child's opportunity to participate in spring sports, fine arts, prom, and potentially graduation. The district says those who are wearing masks while attending in-person learning will not be considered a close contact case if they are exposed and will not be required to quarantine. In a letter sent to parents, the district says in part, quote, by choosing to have your child wear a mask, you're doing your part to keep our schools open for the next 10 weeks and provide our students with educational opportunities they deserve, end quote. With the state now reopening at 100% capacity and lifting the mask mandate, today, Dr. Anthony Fauci commented on people wanting to restore a sense of normalcy too early. We understand people's need to get back to normal and we are going in that direction. But when you start doing things like completely putting aside all public health measures as if you're turning a light switch off, that's quite risky. We don't want to see another surge, and that's inviting one when you do that. Meanwhile, over on Capitol Hill, it is President Biden's first major legislative win with a final party line vote by the Democratic controlled House. A one point nine trillion dollar covid relief bill is now one step closer to bringing aid to Americans. Karen Kaifa is live in Washington tonight with a look at what happens next. 
President Biden's massive $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill clearing its final hurdle on Capitol Hill. On this vote, the yeas are 220, the nays are 211. The motion is adopted. The House with the final sign off on Senate changes to the bill, including narrowing eligibility for stimulus checks and taking out the House approved federal minimum wage increase. Democrats describing this not as a win for President Biden, but for millions of Americans. This is a momentous day in the history of our country because we have passed historic consequential and transformative legislation. The bill to provide, among other things, direct payments of up to $1,400 per person to families earning less than $160,000 a year and individuals less than $80,000. A $300 weekly federal boost to unemployment benefits through September 6th. $15 billion for long-term low interest loans for small businesses and funding to chart the next somewhat thornier phases of the pandemic, like vaccine distribution and school reopenings. We, of course, are moving full speed ahead on the implementation of the bill because we know the American people need help and need it as soon as possible. Despite the bill's popularity in polls, not a single Republican in the Senate or the House voted in favor. It showers money on special interests, but spends less than 9% on actually defeating the virus. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. Meantime, the Department of Health and Human Services expected to buy another 100 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. Right now, it's unclear how long it'll take for those doses to be created and then distributed. The Biden administration hopes to have enough vaccine for every U.S. adult by the end of May. A flip in supply and demand. It's what a top executive with Walmart says could happen in the next 30 to 45 days. Executive Vice President Dan Bartlett spoke with our sister station WJXT in Jacksonville, Florida today about what he anticipates happening in the coming days. Bartlett says right now they're administering about 70,000 to 80,000 vaccines per day, but he expects that number to increase dramatically and fast. The supply is not keeping up with demand. <clears throat> That's going to flip relatively quickly where we're going to have the supply is going to be ample and then it's going to be about demand. We think at full potential, once we get our full allotment, we could be doing between 10 to 13 million doses a week. Bartlett says once that flip happens, it will be up to communities to get the word out and get people vaccinated. Back here at home, a program to help San Antonio families struggling because of the pandemic is still flush with cash. $133.6 million has been poured into the emergency housing assistance program from different sources over the past year. And city staff told a council committee today that more than 43% of it is still available. Depending on your income, you could get up to nine months of help with rent, utilities, and internet. They recently reset the limits on help, so even if you got money from the program last year, you can get it again. Last month's winter weather and power crises have slowed down how quickly the city can turn around an application and get the bills paid, but staff say they have more people now to help. New at five, a shootout between two groups caught on camera. Now the Bear County Sheriff's Office is hoping you can help them find those suspects. Take a look in a video posted on Facebook. The Sheriff's Office says this happened Sunday morning at the Daiquiri Lounge on FM 78 near Crestway. That's over in Converse. In the video, you see three people exchanging gunfire before they take off in a silver SUV and a silver Chevy Malibu. If you have any information about what happened and who these people are, you can call the Sheriff's Office. Their number 210-335-6070. You can also email them at bcsotips at bear.org. Meantime, we have learned the name of a 24-year-old man who was killed in a crash last night. The Bear County Medical Examiner identifying him as Jovan Cruz. He and another man died after crashing along I-10 near Hausman Road early this morning. Investigators believe the driver was speeding when he lost control on Hausman. His car went airborne. The car then rolled into concrete walls along I-10. Very fortunate that that, uh, that that vehicle didn't get struck by any other vehicles. Unfortunately, this is just a tragic accident. A second victim in the crash has not been identified. San Antonio police also trying to figure out how a woman's body ended up along Highway 281 in Borgfeld Drive. We first told you about this yesterday on the news at 5. According to police, the woman was found dead on 281. 
One witness said they did not see her get hit by a driver. Another man says he stopped his 18 wheeler to block her from being hit by any oncoming traffic. Anyone with information about this case asked to call the number on your screen 210-207-7385. An 18-year-old man now facing a manslaughter charge for his involvement in a deadly crash last month. Arrest records state that Justin Matthew Ortiz was racing before he crashed and killed his passenger, 23-year-old John Gavin Mendoza. The crash happened back on February 8th along Commercial Avenue, not too far from Southwest Military Drive. According to police, Ortiz was speeding and hit a wet patch on the road, then slid into oncoming traffic. His truck was T-boned by another driver. According to an affidavit, Ortiz admitted his uh, to having his truck built to his preferred performance specifications and had fake license plates on it. The affidavit says an inspector could have deemed the truck unsafe for travel. Taking a look outside with live cam, 82 degrees at the airport. Despite a lot of cloud cover, we've lost a lot of the low clouds from early in the day, but we've got some mid high level clouds moving in from the west, and that has things looking pretty cloudy for us here in San Antonio at this hour. There's also been some additional cloud cover off to the west today. That's keeping temperatures in the low 70s in places like Del Rio, only up to 65 in Rock Springs because of that cloud cover, uh, but it's fairly warm for a lot of us. 81 in Seguin, 82 in New Braunfels. 79 in Bull Verde. So over the next several hours, things will be staying cloudy, humid, and breezy, even a little bit gusty at times this evening. We'll talk about how long it's going to be staying windy and warm, and we'll take a look at our upcoming weekend rain chances in just a bit. Tim. Thank you, Katie. On to the situation now at the southern border right now where the Biden administration is under increasing pressure to address the migrant surge. ABC News has learned nearly 3,500 children have crossed the border without a guardian, tripling in just the last two weeks. Today, the White House laid out a plan to combat the surge while stressing the border is not open. Working across the whole of government, we will look at access to international protection and refugee resettlement and rethinking asylum processing to ensure fair and faster consideration. Meanwhile, here in Texas, Governor Greg Abbott is calling this issue a crisis despite the White House disagreeing. Abbott has deployed 500 National Guard troops to help with patrolling the border. Kia is recalling 380,000 SUVs and sedans over a fire risk. The company says electronics under the hoods of some sportages and cadenzas could short circuit, overheat, and eventually catch fire. It applies to sportages made between 2017 and 2021 and cadenzas made between 2017 and 2019. If you have one of those models, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says you should park the vehicle outside and away from structures. They will start notifying customers in late April. Customers will not be charged to make the repairs. Heartburn and acid reflux. They're common conditions and are at times extremely uncomfortable. Hold the meds up next, what you might turn to to find a little relief. It's an uncomfortable feeling that burning in your chest and it's pretty common. Some 30% of American adults report suffering from heartburn and acid reflux. Before you reach for the meds though, 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz has some simple lifestyle changes that might help you feel better. To deal with her heartburn, Valia Portella made real changes to her diet. I cut out coffee uh, to only one cup a day, uh, hot chocolate, sporadically, and that was one of my favorite treats, uh, tomato sauce, tomatoes. Changes in eating habits and new stresses may lead to more frequent heartburn, but meds aren't the only solutions. Proton pump inhibitors like Prilosec, Prevacet, and Nexium can be really expensive. And when these drugs are used over the long term, they've been linked to an increased risk of heart attack, kidney disease, and dementia. 
But here's some good news. A recent study found simple lifestyle changes can relieve symptoms, such as maintaining a healthy weight, getting at least 30 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise daily, and following a diet that includes more whole grains, less red meat, and less added sugars. If you smoke, here's another reason to quit. The chemicals in cigarettes can interfere with normal digestion. As for beverage choices, people who drink no more than two cups of coffee, tea, or soda a day experience fewer symptoms. For occasional mild heartburn, an antacid can help. If you expect to get heartburn from a spicy meal, Consumer Reports says a low-dose histamine blocker like Tagamet or Pepsid AC can help. But tweaking your habits may keep you out of the heartburn aisle to begin with. Those little changes uh, made me feel much, much better. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Live look outside with Sky 12. Sun came out, then it went away, then it's back out. <laughs> but all day long, it's been windy. Mm -hmm. Yes, gusty winds today, and we're not going to see a whole lot of change for the rest of the work week. Generally warm and humid the next several days, but also windy at times. I do think we will be able to see a little more sun tomorrow and into Friday afternoons, but still we're not looking at a clear blue sky until sometime on Sunday. So staying very spring like here for the next several days. I do want to show you today's time lapse. Plenty of clouds and you'll see kind of what Ursula was talking about this afternoon. We saw a few peaks of sun here and there, but we've seen a big increase. You can see here from the west. This is looking west an increase in those thinner clouds that are higher up in the atmosphere. Those have been streaming in uh, from the west here. We've got some moisture moving in from the southwest and we're seeing that uh, with our eyes in terms of those mid and high level clouds. Now when you look at radar here, you'll see some what looks like precipitation showing up near Del Rio when I switch radar sites. So that first view for you here was our New Braunfels radar site. When we go farther out to the west, we've got our radar site closer to Del Rio. That shows uh, not necessarily really any rain falling, maybe a few little sprinkles down there to the south and east of Del Rio. But essentially, this is just a lot of cloud cover off to our west. And again, that is helping to keep temperatures a few degrees cooler from places like Del Rio up to Rock Springs. We're at 80 at the airport now in San Antonio, 85 in Pleasanton, but look how hot it has gotten down to the southwest, 92 in Catula right now with a bit more sunshine for our friends well to the south. And it has been a windy day. Our wind gusts are starting to relax just a bit. We had widespread wind gusts earlier this afternoon, up closer to 40 miles per hour, especially east of 35. Some of those are starting to drop off now, but essentially for the rest of the evening, even into tonight, I can't rule out some wind gusts up closer to 30, uh, eventually closer to 25 miles per hour. But bottom line, it will be staying breezy this evening. Mostly cloudy skies becoming completely overcast as we get closer to midnight and we will start off gray for everyone early tomorrow. So there's that moisture moving in from the southwest. And again, we're seeing that in terms of the cloud cover today, the mid and high level clouds. But really the big show is sitting over California today. This is an area of, of upper level low pressure that's going to affect our weather weather as we get into the weekend, but also other portions of the country as well. This will actually end up being a pretty big storm system. Now for the next couple of days, Thursday into Friday, it'll still be well to our west. So again, we won't see a whole lot of change here, staying very warm, humid and windy for the next couple of days as we finish out the work week. Now, as we get into Saturday, especially Saturday night, that's when our rain chances start to pick up. This upper level low will be moving across North Texas and the Central Plains Saturday night as it moves through. It'll bring a front through our area and that'll result in chances of some showers and thunderstorms. Yes, there certainly could be a few rumbles of thunder Saturday night, but the bigger chance for any significant severe weather is going to be for areas north of Austin up closer to the I-20 corridor. So we are not overly concerned with any severe thunderstorms as we get into Saturday night and the early morning hours of Sunday. There certainly could be a few rumbles of thunder, but we don't want you to be overly concerned about any widespread severe weather as we get into the weekend. Hopefully we'll get at least a quick hitting dash of some healthy rain here again with our best chances of rain and a few thunderstorms coming on Saturday night. I can't rule out a few early morning showers and rumbles of thunder on Sunday, but generally speaking, Sunday will be a day to clear out and we'll get to see some sunshine once again. So again, those changes kick in this weekend for the next couple of days. Things will be staying pretty similar. Breezy tomorrow morning. Cloudy skies will start off mid to upper 60s for a lot of us warming back into the 80s tomorrow afternoon. I wouldn't be surprised 
nice if it's a couple of degrees warmer tomorrow because we see a little more sun tomorrow afternoon and a very similar situation into Friday with that chance of rain coming Saturday night as we spring forward. Guys. Oh, that's right. Set your clocks. Yep. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. Tonight's matchup between the Spurs and Mavs might be what Yogi Berra might have called deja vu all, <laughs> all over, over again. again. There you go, because it was this time last year when everything shut down after they had played the Dallas Mavericks. When we come back one year later, the Spurs are now giving it a go to start the second half of their season in Dallas, though, this time. And Dak with his big day in Dallas coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs tip off the second half of their NBA season tonight when they face the Mavs in Dallas. The irony of this is so blatant. The last game the Spurs played before the COVID-19 pandemic shut down the NBA and all of sports was on March the 10th, 2020. And it was against their I-35 rivals in the AT&T Center. A game the Spurs won, by the way, 119-109. Now they're set to resume their season after the All-Star break on the very same fateful day one year later. What does Lonnie Walker the fourth remember about that night and the shutdown that followed? I think I think during that time time period we were trying to you know figure figure things out. I don't think we were playing too well um, as a team, you know. And um, I think that was kind of like the stepping stone of all right, let's 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 get it together, let's keep on picking it up. So uh, going into it, I, I did not expect what was going to happen and how much things have changed. But um, you know, uh, COVID really changed the game, I guess you could say. <laughs> it sure did. All right, tip time tonight, seven thirty. Highlights for you tonight on the Night Beat. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. For the first time since he agreed to his four-year $160 million contract that could go as high as $164 million with incentives, Dak Prescott is talking. It's really the first time we've heard from the Cowboys starting quarterback since he suffered his horrific season-ending ankle injury. They kept him out of most of last season and now reports he could be 100% next month. Prescott and his representatives got exactly what they wanted, a four-year deal that includes $66 million just to sign in $73 million the first season and his annual salary of 40 $2 million, second only to the Chiefs quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, today made official at the Cowboys press conference. Overwhelmed with so many different emotions right now um, from uh, love, um, from support, um, from the, the faith that has just been instilled in me by an amazing organization, um, from the support that Mr. Jones talked about that so many people came in on my behalf and spoke of. Um, eagerness, excitement, anxiousness to give uh, this organization and the Jones family everything that they invested in. Uh, and that's a Super Bowl and that's to go win. And he looks healthy. That's the important part. Congratulations to the Cold Cougars. They have been able to return to the state finals in Class 3 boys basketball. That's after they were able to beat Little River Academy last night, 59 to 50, in the state semifinals. And get this, Cole will now face Tatum Friday at 2 on the very same day, one year later, when the UIL shut down the boys basketball tournament here in the Alamo Dome due to the pandemic. It's been a grind. Our motto is being built different. We just had to have that mindset every game. Playoffs, uh, regular season, district, every single game. It's really special to finally take advantage of the opportunity we didn't have last year, you know. And Antonian is also headed to their state championship that will be played in College Station on Friday as well. Good luck to both teams. You got it. Thank you, Greg. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5 with us. World News is next. We'll see you back here for more local news tonight at 6.